Hello everyone. Uh, we are going through a tough pandemic situation uh, due to which uh, there is economic recession and recently there have been cyclone attacks in West Bengal and parts of Orissa and there have been intermittent earthquakes in different parts of our country and I added to all this now we recently had a locust attack it started in East Africa East African countries then it went to Iran and through Pakistan it came into India where uh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and parts of Gujarat and Punjab uh, were affected. Now, uh, this was reported as a worst locust attack in last 27 years. The last attack was in 1993 in Maharashtra. And it was also reported that these locusts were flying in higher altitudes than, than they usually fly. And uh, looking about locusts, they are similar to grasshoppers and crickets, they are of the same family. But the distinct feature is that they have two phases in their life, like one is solitary phase where they live individually their normal life, then there is a gregarious phase. Uh, this happens when they, they where they form into groups or swarms and under favorable environmental conditions. There has to be rain, there has to be moist land and there has to be green vegetation. And uh, in such conditions, uh, the locusts can come together as groups and uh, they can form large groups can come together as swarms and large swarms can come together as plague and can destroy the whole vegetation, anything edible on their way, on their path. Okay. And uh, basically in, in such gregarious phase, many uh, changes happen in the locust. Okay. They will have... Uh, Mm, changes in their appearance and there will be changes in their uh, uh, habits they, they will have increased uh, appetite for food they will eat a lot uh, they will have uh, rapid movements of flights okay? and they will have more energy and endurance than normal and it is a, they will also have a en enlargement of their brain uh, so the group behavior is uh, very significant and different for the locust uh, they keep on moving uh, they keep on flying eating flying eating flying uh, along with the flow of the wind so when they go along with the wind they will save energy of the flight so basically when they go along with the wind they will go from areas of higher higher wind pressure to, uh, to areas of lower wind pressure okay adult locusts can feed uh, food up to their own body weight every day so a, a locust swarm can eat uh, hundreds of uh, tons of vegetation in a, in a single day so when they while they are eating and they see they sense that the food is running out the vegetation is running out they release pheromones they are uh, aromatic uh, scent messages uh, that will tell others to that, that will communicate to other locusts that the food is running out we have to fly and to go to the other other place we have to move on so basically the locust plagues have a, a great effect on food and economy it destroys the produce of a nation and it, it can create famines okay now in the bible we see such locust plagues and attacks uh, it is not something new. We have been seeing this from ancient times. Okay, in Exodus 10, um, we see Egypt is oppressing Israel. Egypt, uh, Egyptian Pharaoh is oppressing uh, the people of Israel under him with more burden and work. God uh, decides, hearing the cries of the people of Israel, God decides to res restore them. And he uses Moses and uh, he tells the Pharaoh, through Moses to release them but the Pharaoh doesn't release so there are 10 plagues coming upon uh, upon the land of Egypt and and the, and the king the Pharaoh and uh, the eighth plague is uh, is the locust plague and uh, it says that the vegetation which which was left after the hail will be now destroyed to, through the locust plague so the seventh plague was hail and there was an effect on the vegetation but what the left out vegetation will now be destroyed by the locust so moses uh, uh, uses his staff and as god told the plague came upon and it was like uh, the the locusts were so much in number that it covered the whole land 
and no one has seen something so many locusts in their life like that uh, the verses say you can read uh, uh, exodus 10 verses 1 to 20 to see this uh, let me read few verses just for you to know it says the lord then said to moses stretch out your hand over the land of egypt and the locusts will come up over it and eat every plant in the land everything that the hail left okay and in verse uh, 15 they covered the surface of the whole land so that the land was black and they consumed all the plants on the ground and all the fruit on the trees that the hail had left nothing green was left on the trees or the plants in the field throughout the land of egypt then as we read it says that the uh, the pharaoh the officials told pharaoh and he consented and uh, moses came and he prayed to god and then uh, the locust when go into the red sea god changes the flow of the wind from east to west and then after the plague goes on pharaoh again said no i will i can send only able bodied men to go to your land and to worship your god but i will not send everyone so then the ninth plague comes upon which is darkness uh, in psalms 105 34 we see the same situation told upon it is said like he spoke and the locusts came a young locusts without number like moses spoke and locusts came and uh, basically in bible we see when locusts are used um, you know when god is uh, disciplining some nation or maybe judging a particular nation and uh, in some cases there there is restoration god is restoring them as well in leviticus 11:22 uh, we see locust as a clean food to eat in deuteronomy 28:38 uh, we see uh, there are some curses for disobeying god's law and one of the curses say uh, you will sow much seed in the field but harvest little because locusts will devour it so there will be less harvest uh, against the labor we do because of locusts in judges 6 and 7 we see you know the the midianites are coming against israel along with amalekites and quidimites they are encamping around israel and they are destroying their vegetation they are eating their food and uh, making uh, israel waste okay uh, judges 6 5 says midianites came with their cattle and their tents like a great swarm of locusts they and their camels were without number and they entered the land to lay waste to it in 1 kings 8 37 to 40 solomon is praying like we see these pestilences locust grasshopper uh, or uh, uh, enemy attack uh, the national disasters plagues and illnesses uh, even in those times and what they did was uh, they were praying to god you know let me read a few verses 1 kings 8 37 says when there is famine in the land solomon is praying okay when there is famine in the land when there is pestilence when there is a blight or mildew locust or grasshopper when their enemy besieges them in the land and its cities when there is any plague or illness every prayer or petition that any person or that all your people israel may have they each know their own affliction so basically then he says we will all pray towards your temple god we will all when such things happen to us in our nation I, we will all pray as a nation towards you you forgive us and you deliver us okay so locust the point is the locust is also included here as a national disaster which can affect a nation and in proverbs we see you know uh, something interesting it says locusts have no king yet all of them march in ranks you know in the locust locust swarm there is a harmony there is a ranking there is a hierarchy but they don't have a leader surprisingly to lead them joel part is very very important we see god judging people and then later he also shows a restoration joel 1 it says uh, these verses are very important let's uh, let's read them the word of the lord that came to joel son of bethuel 
Hear this, you elders, listen all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? Tell your children about it and let your children tell their children and their children the next generation what the devouring locust has left, the swarming locust has eaten, and the swarming locust has left, the young locust has eaten, and what the young locust has left, the destroying locust has eaten. So we see four different kinds of locusts, the devouring locust, the swarming locust, the young locust and the destroying locust. So it shows a total destruction. You know, a locust eats and leaves something. The next locust comes, they eat and leave something. And ultimately after the four locust is eating the vegetation, there is going to be total destruction. So then as you read uh, verses like from Joel 1 to 20, when you read, then... Uh, you see like uh, what uh, we have what the nation has lost and what uh, they are uh, the instruction on, on what they should do to to get a restoration you know and in joel 2:25 uh, we see like god says about restoration of that nation god says i will repay you for the years that the swarming locust ate the young locust the destroying locust and the devouring locust my great army that i sent against you in this verse we see that god's used locust to judge nation and uh, he also says like when when there is when the nation is repenting and coming back to god when that nation is praying to God and asking for forgiveness, God is saying, I will uh, forgive you. I will repay you for all the years the locusts ate. So it is not a restoration of time. Time which has gone is gone. But the blessings which you missed, the opportunities which you missed, the fruits and rewards which you missed in those times, God can uh, repay you back. God can restore them back. So you will have more fruits. Uh, in, in the time of locust, you you sowed many th many seeds and fruits, but it didn't it didn't bear much. The harvest was low. So when you repent and when you receive forgiveness, God says, when you when you sow little seeds, you will also get more harvest. In that way, God will restore the blessings. Okay. Then in uh, Nahum, we see um, like the Assyrians are against uh, Judah. And Nahum the prophet is uh, using uh, 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 psychological warfare. He is uh, saying to the Assyrians that you are like uh, uh, your military officials and your merchants, your people are like locusts who can be easily scattered, easily frightened. Nahum 3 verses 15 to 17, we see that. Okay, then uh, we go to the New Testament in Matthew 3, 4. We see John, John the Baptist, uh, he was eating locust. Now, even nowadays we see, we are hearing reports, people are trying, uh, people in many parts of the, of the world are eating locusts because locusts contain around 70% protein. Uh, in Israel, it is a delicacy. So in Matthew 3, 4, as we read, it says, uh, now John had a camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. So there was a man who was eating locusts. He was living on locusts and honey, protein and carbohydrates and maybe honey had vitamins, minerals as well. And we come to an important part, Revelation verses 9, 1 to 12. We see a different kind of locusts here. Uh, I will read to you and in between I will comment on on that it's very important you see it is going to happen in the future okay there is going to be judgment on people who reject god and this is one of the one of the judgment okay uh, revelation 9 verses 1 to 12 I'm, I'm reading it says the the fifth angel blew his trum trumpet and i saw a star that had fallen from the heaven to earth the key for the shaft to the abyss was given to him. He opened the shaft to the abyss and smoke came up out of the shaft like smoke from a great furnace, so that the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke from the shaft. Then locusts came out of the smoke onto the earth, and power was given to them like the power that scorpions have on, on the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have God's seal on their foreheads. These are locusts, 
which are coming from the from a world or from a place which is under the earth okay and these are not normal locusts they are they are like as powerful as scorpions and they will not be harming the vegetation they will be harming the people who reject god okay reading ahead from verse 5 they were not permitted to kill them but were to torment them for five months the torment is like the torment caused by a scorpion when it stings someone in those in those days people will seek death and will not find it they will long to die but death will flee from them the appearance of the locust was like horses prepared for battle something like golden crowns was on their heads their faces were like human faces they had hair like woman's hair their teeth were like lion's teeth they had chests like iron breastplates the sound of their wings was like the sound of many chariots with horses rushing into battle and they had tails with stingers like scorpions so that with their tails they had the power to harm people for five months we see these these are not, not these are not normal uh, locusts they are going to torment people they will long the people will long to die but they will not they cannot die in this time and uh, then we see descriptions of these locusts how how uh, strong they are uh, and they have like golden crowns on their heads they are like they have human like faces they are like horses you know strong and swift verse 11 and 12 they had as their king uh, the angel of the abyss the, his hebrew name is abaddon and in greek he has the name apollyon the first who has passed so this is the first O of the people who have rejected God. But something different is that we, we read in Proverbs, locusts have no king. But then in Revelations uh, 9 verse 11, we see that there is a king and he is the angel of the abyss. Okay. So these are prophecy. This is a prophecy which is going to happen uh, in future. Okay, so basically we saw like uh, locusts, uh, are involved in judgment and discipline of nations. They have a great impact on the food and economy of a nation. They can create famines. and But God is also in, in Joel 2.25, we see God is also promising restoration when we repent as a nation, when we pray as a nation and seek forgiveness. Okay, And many other portions like Psalms 78.46, Psalms 109.23, Job 39.20, Isaiah 33.4, Jeremiah 46.23, Jeremiah 51.14, Jeremiah 51.27, and Amos 4.9, Amos uh, chapter 7 verses 1 to 3. These are portions where we see about locusts. Okay. I just uh, shared to you the major ones in, in uh, Exodus uh, 10, then uh, Joel, Joel 1 and 2. 1 Kings 8, Solomon's Prayer, and uh, uh, Revelation 9, and Nahum. So, uh, we see that there are many portions in the Bible uh, with respect to locusts, but basically it shows discipline and judgment, and it calls for repentance and prayer and for seeking forgiveness to God, where God can restore our wasted years. God can restore the blessings back to us. Okay, let us repent and seek forgiveness to God. Amen.